Hello everybody, it's Lewis back again with another video. First of all, I would like to apologize for not uploading consistently as I should be. I hope that this year I'll come back and, you know, post more consistently. And I've been thinking about doing this thing with the channel, sorry, for a really long time now, which is talking about, like, disappearances or, like, unsolved murder cases. It's just stuff like that because I really like the dark side of things. And I have this friend and we talk about it literally like all the time, like world conspiracy theories. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, let me know down in the comment section below and yeah, let's get started. So for today's mystery video, we're going to be talking about a case that happened about five years ago, 2013. Yeah, five years ago. And I have probably heard about it because it's like really popular and everything. It's about Elisa Lam. So if you guys don't know, Elisa Lam was born on April 30th, 1991 in Vancouver in Canada. And her parents actually emigrated from, from Hong Kong. So she was going on this tour. And on January 26th, she arrived in Los Angeles. And then two days later, on January 28th, she arrived in the Cecil Hotel. Now if you guys don't know about the Cecil Hotel, there's a lot of history behind it. Like... A lot of murder has been committed there, like, serial killers lived there. I think his name was, like, Richard Ramirez. But yeah, like, this hotel has a lot of history behind it. And to be honest, it just makes the, the case even creepier. So, as I said, she checked into the Cecil Hotel on January 28th. So that was two days after she arrived in Los Angeles. Um, initially, she was um, put into a shared room on the hotel's fifth floor. But after roommates complaining about her, like, odd behaviors, um, she was assigned a room of her own after two days. So I'm going to go into a little bit of the details about the hotel. So it was built as a business hotel in the 1920s. And as I said, it's very famous for like murders and serial killers. The hotel is linked to the death of Elizabeth Short, or you might know her as the Black Dahlia. Black Dahlia, I don't know how to say it. And also, um, the hotel, as I said, was already home to two serial killers, Jack, uh, no, Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterweger, and Richard Ramirez was also known as the Night Stalker. Yeah. Um, there has also been suicides in the hotel. So, going back to Elisa Lam, um, she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, and she had been prescribed four medications. Sorry, I'm just gonna read the medications. They were well butrin. Lamictal, Seracil, and Efexor to treat her disorder. According to her family, she had no history of suicidal attempts at all, and they also kept her mental illness a secret from everybody else. Also started a blog uh, called Other Fields, and there she would just post about her mental illness. Elisa Lam would contact her parents every single day while she stayed at the hotel. And on January 31st, when she was scheduled to check out of the hotel and leave for Santa Cruz, she did not check out. So, you know, since her family was used to getting calls from her every single day, and on that particular day, they didn't hear from her at all, they contacted the LAPD and they flew to Los Angeles as well. On the day that she went missing, the hotel staff said that she was by herself. And another um, woman outside the hotel, Katie Orphan, said that she recalled seeing Lam that day and she said she was outgoing, very lively, very friendly and she was getting gifts to take home back to her family. So the police searched the hotel uh, to the extent that they legally could and they couldn't find anything. They even had dogs go up to the rooftop. They came back and couldn't detect her scent. But one of the police officers said that they didn't search every room and they could only do that if they had a probable cause to believe a crime had been committed. So on February 6th, a week later, at, after Lam had last been seen, um, the police they decided that more help was needed. So they started putting flyers of her image, um, you know, on the streets and the case got more public attention. So on February 14th, the LAPD decided to release a surveillance footage of Elise Lamb in an elevator video where you can see her getting into an elevator and pushing down a lot of buttons and the elevator doesn't do anything and you know she's acting really like weird and she's doing these weird like signs with her hands like stuff like this like her foot is all weird like when she goes out of the elevator as well she's just doing these weird behaviors I'll link the video down below so you guys can watch it if you guys want and then as soon as she leaves the elevator and walks out which was the last anyone saw her the elevator just closes, but
But yeah, some people have speculated that the way she was acting on the elevator could have been something paranormal, or even she might have taken a medication for, you know, her mental illness that caused her to, you know, hallucinate or see things that actually weren't there. Or she might have been talking to someone, like a hotel staff or something, and that person could have potentially been the one that killed her. Because, okay, it's like really weird the way that she died because she was found on the water tank of the hotel. And for her being so like small and so like not like that strong, it would have been impossible for her to climb up, go into the water tank and close the lid, which potentially makes you question whether she did this or not. And it kind of starts to get a bit weird because like no one, you know, like there's no like, there's no evidence that someone put her in there. Some viewers actually said that the video was tampered with before being uh, released to the public because at the timestamps it like skips a bit from like one minute to another, you know, minute. And some people believe that it's been tampered with before being released to the public. Might have cut it out a piece of the video because someone to protect someone's identity that had nothing to do with the case but they didn't want like people to think that that person had anything to do with the case so that's why the video might have been cut off to protect someone's identity so as i was saying her body was discovered in the water tank and hotel guests were complaining to the staff that the water had like really low pressure and there was a weird taste in the water so then one of the hotel workers went up to the hotel water tanks to see what was going on and they discovered her body in the water tank yeah on the morning of february 19th lamb's body was found in one of four 1000 gallon or 3785 liter tanks providing water to guest rooms a kitchen and a coffee shop the tank was drained and could open since its maintenance hatch was too small to accommodate equipment needed to remove lamb's body um elisa lamb's body was found naked in the elevator um partially decomposed and some of the clothes that she was wearing in the elevator video was also found in the water tank and along with her body and clothes they also found her watch and her room key so when they examined her body there was no sign or evidence of physical trauma sexual assault or suicide so in her autopsy report her cause of death was ruled as a an accidental drowning but was it really accidental i mean she could she couldn't have gone up there by herself because to get up to the rooftop you had to add a key to open the you know the doors to go up there and if someone had attempted to open that door an alarm would go off and only a hotel worker had access to open those doors so maybe a hotel worker could have you know put her there and you know left no trace so they wouldn't get caught or so here are a bit of information that causes people to think that she didn't do this by herself so all four tanks are four by eight cylinders propped up on concrete blocks there is no fixed access to them and hotel workers had to use a ladder to look at the water they are protected by heavy lids that would be difficult to replace from within police dogs that searched through the hotel for lamb even on the roof shortly after her disappearance was noted did not find any trace of her although they had not searched the area near the water so yeah that's that statement literally stated that it was way too difficult for her to get in to those water tanks by herself so going back to the video um some people argue that maybe she was trying to escape from someone that was potentially trying to kill her and that's why she was doing those weird you know hand gestures and the way that she was acting and because she was pressing the ele the elevator button so fast it might have indicated that she was trying to get like up like t t for the elevator to close the door as fast as possible so that she could escape from you know whoever was trying to harm her or you know do something bad to her. so just um another creepy thing as well um while around elisa lamb's disappearance um there was this you know tuberculosis going around in the area and a machine that was used to test for you know tuberculosis was called lama lisa which if you ask me i think that's very weird and a coincidence as well because like lama lisa elisa lam that is just really really creepy also another creepy coincidence is that elisa's lam elisa lam's death is linked with the movie dark water so in the movie dark water a mother and a daughter moves into a rundown apartment building a dysfunctional elevator and discolored water gushing from the building's faucets eventually lead them to the building's rooftop water tank, which 
was where Elisa Lam was discovered and in the movie they discovered the body of a girl who had been reported missing from the building a year earlier and she was also missing and her body was in the uh, rooftop, uh, the water tank in the rooftop of the So another like thing that happened, I don't know if it can be classified as creepy or like it might have just been something that she might have activated to do on her blog. Um, her blog actually kept posting even after she went missing so either someone was doing that for her or or maybe she had just you know put away that you can uh, like schedule her uh, her posts to go up on her blog as well and her phone was never found which is actually really weird like really creepy so yeah even though her cause of death was ruled as an accidental drowning no one really knows what really happened to her and to be honest I am kind of a bit like on the side that she did not do this because as I mentioned a million times already in this video she could have not done that to herself I mean she had no attempts of suicides in the past so why would this come up now especially because she was going on like a tour and like there, there was just no reason for her to do that so if you guys have any of your theories please leave them down in the comments below and if you guys like videos like this please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel